Kansas Golf came in early Sunday morning with a seven-stroke lead at the Golf Week Conference Challenge and two golfers in the top two. Dan Sutton had the individual lead and only a strike behind him was Chase Hanna. A tough course with wide fairways, elevated greens, and a lot of water. Let's pick up with Dan Sutton on the second hole. Great drive to the right side of that dogleg fairway, but look at this chip from the rough near the green. Just yep. leaving it a little left hook, son, hook. And off the settle for Burry on the second hole. That's his strongest part of the game, getting the chip onto the green. Now Sutton on the fifth hole. Great drive again, but here's the weakest part of his game. Mid-range iron shot, and he sprays it. He just goes and hooks left, and he sets up a bad approach shot, and he'll have to settle for a two-putt. Even in practice rounds, he sprays iron shots all around. And another problem for Sutton on this day, he has to two-putt a lot of holes, not being very aggressive with the green. He would bogey that. Now Chase Hanna on the 13th hole. He has to take a drop after hitting a hazard, but as he did all day, he recovers. What a shot this was. He got that onto the green. If he had messed that up, he really could have derailed the rest of his round. And the one bogey, the only flaw on his day. Hannah again on the 15th hole to par three, has to recover from that bogey, but he has a good tee shot 40 feet from the pin, but this putt was the highlight of his golf day. And what a highlight it was, 40 feet out. He sinks it. And gets some applause from, from the crowd and why not on that putt. Very well deserved there. Hannah, as he did all day, one bad, two good for him. But Healer, he had no good and a couple bad, and it came to a head on the 16th hole. This chip, very, very poor. And when you have a lie sitting up like that, all you have to do is just chunk at the ball, and instead he gets a lot of the grass, and it doesn't go very far. Healer now on 17, still struggling. He hooks that well left into the rough stuff near the fairway. He's got to pitch it back on, and his drive wasn't good, and his fairway shot was even worse. And his whole round was really compounded by mistakes. Mentally, he needs to get stronger, and that's why Coach Jamie Bermel is with him to calm his nerves when he makes mistakes. And deja vu with the wedge, as you see again, takes a lot of grass and has to put the huge divot back in the ground. Healer would end up bogeying this hole. He's having a rough day so far. Even his putt leaves a lot to be desired as he leaves it short. He has to do putt a lot of holes as well. Now Chase Hanna on the same hole. He's eight under, good drive shot to move on to the left side of the fairway. That's where we need to put it, on the right side there. Turtle Invasion proves how pretty of a, a golf course it was. A lot of nature sights. Hannah, another good putt on the 17th hole. He'll move to nine under, just one off of the individual lead. And now, Charlie Healer will rejoin him on the 18th hole. It comes to fruition how bad he was on the day. He leaves that shot right, has to take a drop. That was his worst drive of the day, and Coach Jamie Bermel still couldn't calm his nerves enough. But a big, huge save here with the par putt, the long par putt, and it looks like Coach Bremel did reassure him as he gets really frustrated when he starts playing bad. Even after the stroke penalty, he saves par on hole 18. Now Hudson on the same hole. This is a really good shot from the fairway. He didn't have a great round, but his last hole gets it right on the green for an easy putt. Easy tapping for Birdie to finish his day. And Chase Hanna also on the 18th hole. Nothing phased him on the day, whether it was taking a drop or as it was was here putting a ball within a couple inches of a sewer grate he has to drop it that doesn't matter and the rule one club length away and even a bad uh, a sequence like this on the day it doesn't mess him it doesn't mess with him up the golf course threw everything it could at him and he just didn't fail and here's the visual proof look at how close that is to the pin within five feet sets up an easy birdie it was a testament to his day he finished it with a birdie tied for the lead He's really happy about that. He's going to give the fist bump to his coach for his first individual win. And at the time that Charlie Healer was taking that bad stroke on 18, Kansas was just three strokes in the lead by the end of the day. They finished 13 strokes ahead for the tournament win. Those, well, those last three holes, eight under par, it speaks for itself. Yeah, they really recovered at the end. The whole golf team did, and that's why they went home with some nice hardware. And to not undersell how big it was for Charlie Healer to save par on on that 18 it looked like he was kind of the the front of that team of the team's you know kind of derailing itself but healer ended up saving par the rest of the team picked him up on their last four holes kansas wins chase has played every every tournament and uh, has been close multiple times and to see him finally break through is uh is pretty exciting because uh He's one of those guys, and I've said this many, many times, he you know, probably doesn't have the best swing, doesn't have the best putting stroke, but he has the most 
competitiveness of anybody uh, I've coached in, in quite a while. And uh, I was telling somebody yesterday, I said, he reminds me of a guy named Zach Johnson who's playing on the Ryder Cup. Just a, he, he will fight till the, till the bitter end. And he's got great golf sense. He pays attention out there. Uh, he's, uh, you know, he's experienced, he's seasoned, and uh, he's pretty good. You know, it's just one tournament, and, uh, you know, we got a lot of golf left in our season. And, uh, you know, I don't think any of us will be satisfied. You know, I'm not, I know I'm not satisfied. So, uh, you know, just kind of keep plugging along. This feels good, but we've got a lot of work left to do.